Good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so, it is an honor for me to be speaking with you today. Um, but I'm not going to be talking about um, DNA. I'm not going to be talking about RNA. I'm not even going to really be talking about sequencing. Um, what I'm going to be talking to you today about is proteins. And I don't have time to go into it, um, but we all know that uh, DNA and RNA uh, are n definitely not as cool as proteins. I don't, like I said, don't have time to go into that. Um, but we all are here because we love nanopore technology. And so we know that we can sequence DNA um, and RNA uh, with a nanopore, but what about proteins, right? Sort of the elephant in the room right now. I know what everyone's thinking. Um, so I've been working towards, so I developed nanopore technology uh, as part of my research, and I've been uh, working on single molecule analysis methods using nanopores uh, for a little while now. And so this is uh, uh, basically a, a schematic here, or a, a movie showing of an unfoldase motor that's able to unfold and pull proteins through a nanopore, okay? And I developed this a few years ago if you're interested in this, and this is going towards single molecule protein sequencing. Um, now, as you might imagine, protein sequencing using nanopores is much more technically challenging for a lot of reasons. But the good news is, if you're uh, uh, interested in studying proteins, typically uh, you might be only interested in studying a subset of different proteins. <clears throat> and as we know, some proteins are easier to detect and analyze than other ones. And you can also tag and engineer proteins to be easier to detect. And this is where the concept of reported proteins and reporter tags come in. Okay, so you think of classical reported proteins that are used that can be linked to specific cellular activities, for instance, gene expression. Uh, the most popular ones are GFP, RFP, uh, beta-gal, luciferase, but you've noticed all of these are, are optically uh, based readouts, okay? And so uh, they are amazing in what you can measure using these things, but they are limited in the number of different reporters that you can use in a single system if you're interested in detecting multiple things, right? because of spectral overlap of their signals. So what if you want to measure lots of things? For instance, you're ed engineering metabolic circuits, synthetic gene circuits with, with lots of different inputs, and you want to measure lots of different outputs, or for instance, uh, pooled screens where you're trying to go for genotype to a, uh, link it to a quantitatively to a, to a phenotype for uh, discovery application. So this is where nanoporters come in. And these are a library of orthogonally barcoded nanopore addressable proteins um, that Ta protein tags that are engineered as reporters, okay? And so this is the design of them at the gene level and then what they look like when they're actually being read by a nanopore sensor. And so the key with these is they have this charged tail on them which allows them to be electrophoretically cap captured within a nanopore and then they just kind of stick there because of this, this folded domain does not allow their complete translocation. So that means the signal that you observe is dependent upon that variable barcode region uh, 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 of the protein, right? So you can change this barcode, the amino acid sequence of that portion of the protein, and then manifest different signals uh, in your raw data. And then we also en engineered these to be secreted by cells so that when you're actually doing an experiment, uh, you can actually do a direct load of these, of cultures that are expressing these uh, proteins with no sample prep and directly load it onto a minine and be able to measure uh, these different barcoded reporters. Okay, right now we have a set of about uh, just over 20 orthogonal, orthogonally barcoded, uh, orthogonal barcodes, um, and we can be directly uh, detected and quantified uh, on, a, on a minine down to uh, picomolar sensitivity, um, and we are able to uh, directly classify these barcodes um, using different machine learning methods. Um, current classification accuracies range from anywhere from 90 to 80 percent, depending on the set that you're using, uh, but the potential barcode sequence space, which we're just really beginning to tap into, is 20 to the 17. Uh, so we think they can really scale, and you're able to use these uh, for <coughs> um, multiplexed uh, like different cell populations where you have differential expressions. You can turn some genes on, some genes off, and be able to read them out um, reliably with this, and also temporally, uh, temporal readout of gene expression on a single flow cell, you're actually able to track the, the expression of these reporters over time. And with that, is nanoporters and beyond just developing these, these set of proteins, also sort of experimenting with minions can be hackable in that you can you know, develop these nano, uh, Oxford nanopore devices to, for more, more bespoke molecular applications outside of DNA and just RNA. Um, so please, if you're interested, come talk to me. Um, uh, yes, thank you. Jeff, thank you very much.